Finance Linda McPhee's workshop. Here's Linda. Hi, and welcome to my workshop. You know, I think I have to be about the luckiest person alive because I... My work is what I love, and I love doing what I do. In fact, I run around the country everywhere from Florida to uh, Toronto to San Francisco and wherever, going to sewing shows and getting people excited about sewing and showing them kinds of ways that they can do things. But the bonus to me is that I get to meet the most interesting people. And when I was in the show in Toronto, I met Leslie Sampson, and I got her to join us on the show, and she's here. So thank you for coming. You're very welcome. Because Leslie is a man... Magnificent fiber artist. You deal with felt and angora rabbits, you said. In fact, you've written the book on... A co-authored, yes. On, on, on what aspect of... It's a reference book on angora rabbits from genetics all the way through to harvesting and the use of the fibers. Because that was what you wanted, the angora rabbits for, was the... My favorite use is okay. felting. Okay. I love felt, and there's no limit to what you can do with felt. So we what can, all kinds of things have you done? We can make yardage, we can make dolls, we can make, uh, some of my favorites are hats and mitts. Okay, you brought some hats and mitts, so we're going to show you the hat braid. Come on with the hat braid. Here we go. And so this is one of... This is one of my favorites. This is 100% alpaca. Even the flowers are alpaca. All the natural colors and of all alpaca. felted together. And very they... lightly done... This is a nice, glamorous look. I love it. Oh, hat. totally glamorous. Oh, Ava, beautiful. Okay, come on, keep coming, hats. Oh, yes. This is a very fun hat. What's so great about felt is that the wind does not go through it, and yet I've made these very, very light, so you don't feel like you have when a helmet. When I say it's wool felt, is there any other kind of felt? Is, is felt always wool, or is it... It's always a natural, yeah, follicle-grown yeah. fiber. In this sure. case, we've got a fair amount of angora in here, because I have a ready supply. Yes, and, and why not mitts? There they go. Yeah. Comfortable. Fits I to had the those hand. on. And they feel so They're beautiful. So soft. They are lovely. Okay, so there's another. All right, hats keep coming. Oh wow! <laughs> Very is, chic. Yes. This, this is, is all Canadian grown fiber, by, uh, locally. Yeah. yeah. And I think you said something like, when a person wears a hat, you can do different things when you're wearing a hat. Oh, it makes you more powerful. It gives you a greater, uh, what's the word I want? A bigger presence, I'm presence, sure, Presence, yes. a visage. It, it just, you're bigger yes. and more important. You can complain about things. And people... You can go into the stores, get all the returns, go into the bank, argue with them, but and no one gives you trouble because, because you you're wearing a hat. hat. So I think a hat like this does well, make Very powerful. Learn it yes, now. Honey. Yes, and, and the mitts to match. And the mitts, and the mitts to match. They won't argue. I mean, you can do whatever. <laughs> okay, look, it's looking good. It even makes her taller, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. I love this one, too. This oh, is Oh, yes. So fun. They might not take you all that seriously. Yes, they would. This is a very dramatic. Well, they're not going to argue with you. No, they're not. It's <laughs> <So they're not laughs> so a woman with a star came into exactly. my house today. <laughs> exactly. She looks fantastic. So this is a piece of the faux fur yeah. then, and then this is all the felting process. And that actually was, uh, the dye was done as a, it's an Arashi Shibori technique. Lovely. Yeah. Okay, that is amazing. Are there more? Oh, there's oh, more. Oh, there's more. Okay, keep going. Okay. okay. Yeah. This, feel the top. This is a Ooh, cashmere, yeah, angora, yeah, yeah, yeah. and very super fine. If you want a hand massage, you wear this one because people just want to feel that. Yeah. I love that look on you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sorry. that looks good. And there's more. Oh, oh yes. The nice, a nice simple hat. That but there is. again, when you're going to go meet your friends, you wear it sort of, you know, tilted to the side yeah, very yeah. stylishly. Yes. But when you get in, uh, when you back outside again, then you crank it down over your yeah. ears. And, and I think there's something warm. about hats. I mean, people say, oh, I can't wear a hat. But look what it does for bad hair. I shouldn't say bad hair, but, you know, I mean, it doesn't matter what your hair is. No. You've got the hat on. No, and so I'd rather have a hat head than a head cold. Yes, there you go. Yes. But we, with the mitts, I thought we would start by showing you how simple it is to build a pair of mittens. Okay, and then we can still do the hats because these hats are oh, amazing. I'm going to show you how to shape a hat. Is our hat done? One more. One more. One more. Okay. <laughs> One more. Oh, oh yes. How could we say this? <gasps> yes. So it's a ski hat. We turn to the side. Turn it's to the got side. A little dingle to put on it. Oh, yes. And then it'll, it'll run around. It's this a is lot very of fun. elfish kind of. And look, this mitt is fantastic. Isn't it? It's almost a gauntlet. Yeah. I mean, that, you have to make a whole outfit. I mean, I'm into making outfits to match all of this, so we'd have to have the perfect just kind of... We can do that. We can, we can be a team, for sure. That's wonderful. Okay. And, and this is good hair. I mean, if you've got good hair, that's good, too. But if it's bad hair... Oh, oh there's more. Okay. Yeah. This is my woodsy hat. This is, uh, again, it's uh, cashmere and merino and, I think, alpaca in this one. And it looked like woods, or yes. like wood. Yes. And so I, then I put... Uh, Beautiful. Uh, oak leaves okay, and we've got to get doing this. We've got to let's get doing this. Okay. okay, let's do this. Okay, so you said we're going to start with the mint. We're going to start with the mint. And this is the material. This is this extra plum yum, fantastic, feel that. 
Oh, yeah. It's like cream. Okay. That's the Angora okay. cashmere wool. But it could be a, a, another wool. I mean, it, it could be. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that's one of the other things that's so fantastic about this, Linda, is, is that you can access materials that you're just not going to see. You have a shape store. already on here. I is have a important? shape yeah. that I've already worked out. So this is your mitt pattern. This is my mitt okay. pattern. Okay. So and then I would put the wool that shape. over this. Already ready. Okay. Oh, you got one done. Okay. I got one done. Perfect. Uh, which way does this see. silly thing go? Here we go. This is the bottom. Yeah. Yep. There we go. Yep. And so what I would do is I take my felting needles, and this is a, a mechanical felting They're technique. They're all barbs. Yeah. They have little barbs. barbs. They push the fiber through the, the rest of the fiber. Okay. And I tap it. You don't have to jam it. You just tap it very gently. Okay. This pushes the and fibers. And this had started out with all fluffy. And, by and I'm keeping it? it fluffy on the edges because okay. I still need to shape them around. Okay. This one has three how, needles in it. How long would it. you tap? I would go once around, okay, and when it, that was finished, I'd flip it over, okay, and I'd do it again. I'd do that four times, okay, and then, and then no water, no water, not at this I, point. I keep thinking felting and water, but well, no. we will, okay, we will. Okay. And I have a, a sponge, a piece of foam that I've cut, carved into, and yeah. you could have whatever size that you wanted, obviously. Yes, you can. Although this one size seems to work pretty well. Well, there's, there's a bit of give to these. I, when I tried them on, I can tell. Yeah, yeah. that's good. And okay. then I will shape this around. Da, 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 da. And come around this way. Why have I not had any of these needles? Obviously, they make oh, everything do what you want to do. They're fantastic. Yeah. So it shaped this all around. And you kind of just mold it. Yep. Yeah. Tear it down a little bit and work it into here. Okay. And then I have, so I can sort of see that this is all going to... We come to here. Okay. We've gone all the way around. We haven't had to put any grease on this so it comes off, you know, <laughs> like a cookie. Well, actually, what you ha that's a good that you mention that because before you wet felt this... You have to get your hand in here and loosen it all up because you forced it into the sponge. That's what I'm saying. It's going to stick. And if you don't release it from the sponge, you will felt it to the sponge. <laughs> You're never going to get your hand <laughs> and in. You've got a nice felted sculpture. Yeah. You can put some eyes and nose on it or whatever, but then that's different. Exactly. Okay. okay. So at this point, we would put on our design. Let's see, I've got that. So we're going to go this side. Okay. Oh, yeah, this is a matching mitt. And that's the other trick then. Is there a right and left of these mitts or you, you form them? I make them right okay. and left. Okay. Mm -hmm. But here, what we would do is take a needle... Take one of the larger ones. There are different sizes of these, and we're going to use the larger needle. Okay. Because this is thicker, is that why we'd want a larger so needle? So I want it to go a bit farther. I want it more incorporated. Okay. And you can try this too. Okay. But you're just going to tap it right into place like an applique. I think you're going to eliminate the need of a sewing machine. We just use our all our old bard or bird needles, and we just do this. Okay. this is Here you go. Tap, tap, tap. Yeah, it does. It does. Okay. Is this going to stay well or, or? Oh, we're going to make it stay. Okay. What do we do then? All right. So you've tapped that in. Yeah. And then if we want additional design, we can take some locks. This is a border luster lock. Most of the wool that I work with is merino. Okay. Just because it's so fine. So this is really this nice is where piece. we're going with this. This is where we're going. Okay. At this point, this would then be wetted. Okay. So I've got right a, through the whole thing. It's a sponge. Yes, yes. And we, we put our hand through there so that it's not hooked. And yeah. the soap I'm using is a, it's a handmade olive oil soap. Okay. This like goes on soap, here. Like it's, yeah. Oh, it's wonderful on the hands. Although dish soap works, but okay. olive oil okay. is nicer. Yeah. Okay. So you just rub, 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 rub. Okay. It gets a bit wrinkly, yeah. but as you rub it, it all comes together. And then we end up with this piece. And you pull that off, and you're left with this, yes. And that's, that is wet, but we could... And all I'm going yeah. to show you is in wet felting... How did you get the thumb to be over here? You just kind of... Oh, you just shifted over. Okay, it was yeah, over it was here, over there, and, now, okay. and now it's definitely a left-handed okay, yeah, glove. All right. And what I want to show you is, with a rolling technique, this shrinks up really quickly. Felt shrinks in the direction in which it is agitated. That's the number one rule. Okay. So if I go like this, I will shorten the glove. And this is a boot mat. But it's okay. perfect. perfect. It catches yeah. all the mess. If you get too much, you just dump it in the sink. It's no big deal. Yeah. <laughs> Use it for your boots again. That's all right. And you can get pretty tough with this. Yeah. Yeah. Or a washboard. I suppose originally they did washboards, didn't they? You could do a washboard, but actually these bumps are smaller and they're more okay. conducive okay. to a good felt. But that's already much oh, yeah. shorter. Yeah, that is much shorter. I know. And we could keep on, so on and so on? It so gets on to, and yeah, so yeah, on okay. until we have... A very nice Do you put it back on the form to dry it then, or do you just... No, 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 because by the time you shrunk this down and you go in this, to, to take up this extra bit, okay. 
I would go this way. Okay, okay. Right? Mm-hmm. So then that all comes down to shape. Okay. And before you know it, you've got a glove. To put it on, okay. And this really will shrink from this size down to that size. Okay, so I can see why one size pretty well does fit all. You just shrink it a little bit more. Exactly. Yeah, so. Okay. And then you can add design afterwards. Of course. Well, we're going to do some hats. So I we're going to just take you. a quick break, I think. Yeah. And then we'll get onto the hats. Excellent. So don't you go away. <laughs> I promised you we'd be back, and here it is with Leslie, who is the wonderful fiber artist. Let's do get ready to the hats. How how long does it take you to make hats? It takes me about an hour and a half. The most <laughs> the most hats I've ever made was fifty six in two weeks. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't even tired. And I think the delight of this, as you said, this is the oldest form of making hats. Uh, well, other than wearing a twig on your head or something, but I mean, this is this goes back. This is the most ancient way to make any kind of fabric, and I mean, the the people in Mongolia have been living in them for for yes. centuries and centuries. Yes. But yeah, yeah. five to eight thousand years from what we've been able to find from uh, before there was looms, we built it. And, it was uh, so direct; it's right from your hands, right into the piece. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so what are the principles involved in making that? In this one, rather than doing the mechanical work of stabilizing the shape first by doing all the punching, right, we're going to we go right into the wool. And I've taken again; this is a merino angora blend. Just because that's what I like and that's yeah. what I have, and yeah. I like, I love the finish. But you could use different kinds. Oh, could you? absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and, well, and mix different kinds. Absolutely. Yeah. Although uh, mohair tends to be fairly stubborn. Okay. And then I would. So you have this, and I, just before you do all that, we should say that there is there is a shape there that you've sort of cut out the hat. Right. And, and is I this work... going to be this hat, or well, it's going to be... look a bit more like, like that. Yeah, We're okay. going to do a cuff hat again. Okay. Put on the soap solution. I'm working with about two to three ounces of fiber. Okay. And then I would press that down. And when you say, if you figure out how thick do you want to make this, you can kind of feel before you put the water on. Right. How you thick can it. press your hand down really hard to the table, and, and that's what it's yeah. going to feel like. And when you put that fiber on, it's good to maybe put it in different directions because then exactly. it's exactly so. Better. Well, you have a, a more even felt. Yeah. So I'd wet this all down. Okay. And then I would fit it over the block. Okay, and so can we actually do that? Well, will it, will it move? If we get a little more, whoops, yeah. slippery like soap. <laughs> okay, a little more on. And this is rather therapeutic, too. I think it feels rather, <laughs> Doesn't it feel rather good. good. <laughs> it does, yes. yeah. And you can just kind of, yeah. So we're not going to be totally wonderful no, but here, but we get the point across. We get the idea. Because it really does become much more manageable in this When form. it's wetted. Now, I know a lot of fi- fiber artists who would just scream if they saw me lifting wet yeah, felt yeah, but fact, I, I, I told you to I asked it you works to. it works just fine okay good and we're going to mold that and we do really have to have this is not a human hair I mean we can't do this on a human no a bald, Are you bald, bald head no. <laughs> <laughs> something with a bald head you could use but well, you uh, could yeah but, and but normally I would I would a head cut block this is the way to go. a head block is the way to go this is one of my designs okay this is something that I came up with myself because it's the it's well, a, I like the idea that it's expandable head. This is it what it is. Look at so here's my so extra we've got large skinny little head, and we've got skinny uh, little head heads, and we've got with that. a brim, without a brim. Yeah, yeah. I can go like that. I can make them big. I can make them small. Oh yeah. All sizes, three styles, oh, one yeah, block. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. So oh. I would actually use scissors to make this perfect. But what we're going for is the hood shape. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So this and all so goes on here. So you can actually cut out sections and, and really form it around. You form it around beautifully, okay. and then you rub it for about 10 minutes. And when you say rub it, do you mean just rub yeah, it? Yeah, just, well, I actually keep the felt behaving properly. Put your, and you what put is this, this fabric? Is just anything? Curtain. Okay, whatever. Scrapple <laughs> curtain. Yeah, anything, anything, okay. And what happens is very, very quickly, the felt begins to come together. It becomes a cohesive fabric. Yeah. And we take a peek at it. You can see that already. Yeah. It's becoming a fabric. Yeah, yeah. Okay, if so so then we get something then we let that dry or what do we do? No, we go from here, we go directly to because at this point it's going to look like this. Yes. Mm-hmm. We would have uh, brought the steam together. Mm-hmm. And uh, in the millinery in- industry this is known as a hood. Okay. Although I've always thought it sort of looked like a big coffee filter, but that works <laughs> yeah, too. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. You want to dampen you this down. Do some more? And just the way I shrunk the mitt, 
a little bit of water on this. That's not going to work. Okay. There we go. Okay. This boot mat, again, is a perfect input. We love the boot mat. Yep, We're yep. loving the boot mat. Yep. But I want to bring this hat a little shorter, so I'm going to fold it. Actually, I should let you do this. Okay, and then... Let you do some work. Okay, yes. This holds my bundle Wrap together. Okay. And then I scrub it. Well, you want to roll it. Oh, okay. So, very fast. Faster. <laughs> Faster. <laughs> okay, okay. <Harder. laughs> okay. And as can I, I start, can I start moving a little yes, bit? Yes, yes, you yeah. should. Okay. Okay, and then we just... Would you love to see It's kind of squishing work. out. That's all right. We okay. only really we rolled it for about 30 seconds in one direction. Okay. And then when you unroll it, it gets shorter. It does get shorter. It does get shorter. So, so I'm going to give it It looks kind of fat this way. Is that... Is well, that we're going to fix that? that. Okay. We're going to alternate. We're going to come along this way. Let's get my muscles into it here okay, for a moment. Yeah, you've got the experienced muscles. I had to just sort of... Okay. Squish. Oh, well, it's just water. It's just water. Well, Let's your hands go. are always <laughs> clean. Yes, exactly. Yes, your hands are very clean. Okay, let's see what happens now. And if you get it too small, can you make it big again? Yes, you can, actually, because <laughs> there's, no, there's no well, problem. Look at that. That's yes, a whole lot smaller. Yes, it is. It is. At this point... Can we put it back on there? I'm going to open this up just a wee bit this way. And it, and whereas it was light, fluffy fiber... Yes, yes, it was. It now becomes something very strong. Yes. And we can make it... And turn up the brim. Turn up my brim. Turn up the brim. And I have a hat. And we leave it on there to dry then? No. You no. Actually, you pull it off, put it over your heat register. Okay. The vent. Okay. Done. Okay. That is fantastic. Oh, the hats. And from there, that's a nice one. When it's really Did you trim nicely, this? Did that, uh, I trimmed this? it a bit and uh, pressed it with an iron because it okay. is, after all, hair, right? Yes. So it heats out the hair. Yes, 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 yes. And feel how light it is. It is. And then you put these little doodly doos in when you did it in that stage, or can you put them? I guess you could punch those in. You can put them in actually anywhere along the route as long as your piece is dry. Okay. You can only needle on dry. Okay, I, that's a good point. So I could go one. halfway, yeah, yeah. put it down, come back and work on it later. Leslie, I think the next obvious thing to do then is to Yardage. come into some fabric and we'll make some jackets. And this is where I really, oh, we've got to do this. Oh, so yes. thank you for this part. We'll be back. We're back, and what fun we're having today, because Leslie's with us, and Leslie, the fiber artist who does felt, you promised we could do fabric. Yes, we can, but you've changed. Oh, yes, I, <laughs> I, I do have to change, and I'd love to change, but this is sort of an inspiration for what I'm going to show you in a few minutes. Once you get me some fabric, we're going to make some jackets out of it. The fastest, most instant way to make fabric. Okay. As you again, with the soap solution. Yeah. Again, I've laid out the fibers on in two directions. I'm just going to head them all, yeah. I'm going to squish the stone. And again, look at I'm fancy fancy equipment I've got here. Oh, yes. This is high, high tech oh, stuff. Oh, high tech. This is a fresh yeah. garbage bag and everything. <laughs> so I'd squish it like this? Or I well, we to... wetted it down. And now I just wanted to show you an edge where I can just pull an edge over like this. I had sort of a messy edge. And now I have... Selvage edge yes, a bit. Yes, instant that... selvage edge. Neat and tidy. Isn't oh, that great? Oh, nice. Square it off. Yes. From so here, then... back from here, and we're rubbing. Oh, that, I knew I wanted to do some of this. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. It feels good, doesn't it? Yes, it does. So you can rub as much as you want? Well, you rub about five minutes on one side, five minutes on the mm -hmm. other, and then you start to fold it and roll it, just like we did with the hat. Yep. Shrinks in the direction yep. in which yep. you agitate it. Okay. And then we set, and let, let it just towel dry? Or... You shrink it down as far as you need it to go. Uh-huh. And you put it on the register if you want, or you can do whatever. Yeah, whatever okay. you like. Okay. So then you could make you a piece like this. You could make a piece like this. Now, this was a lap... Uh, blanket that I've made. This took about two hours okay. to do this much fabric. So I've gone from fluffy fuzz to fabric okay. to a and finished. You, you start out with this color and then you put a layer. Actually there Actually, seems to be a little bit of something in the middle. Right. This is a laminated piece. I have a piece of uh, cheesecloth in And that just gives it a little more stability a bit. It gives me a warp and a weft. Sure, sure. 
and then we can lay these things on, and then this becomes part of the whole process. And this is this is a um, a type of felted inlay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Whereas this piece, well, this was what I want to show you, Leslie, because mm. I was so delighted when I found this in a little funny little store, and I came home with this because this is felted, isn't it? I mean, this whole it's, piece. This is beautiful, and, and this was all wet felted. This had to be done by hand. And then hand stitching on it. When I brought this home to the workshop, the staff said, "You got to cut that off and make it into a coat." And I said, eh, "I don't think so. It's oh, so no. beautiful." But then I thought, you know, I could make something similar. I could make a coat, so I wouldn't have to cut my rug. So let me show you what I did. In fact, this sort of inspired this. This was yeah, sort of the summer version of this. I said, "Let's take some cotton. Let's take some cotton knit. Put the fuse of all the back, and then cut out shapes and applique the shapes." Oh my God. It works in black too. Let's let's show some models. Because <laughs> I couldn't decide whether I liked it best in white ah. or in black. So here's the same thing, not exactly the same thing, but very similar. And turn around. It's got such a great energy. It does. I mean, you don't fade into the woodwork with this one. And no. what I did on this one too, you might notice, I put a black collar and black cuffs to make it a little bit more sensible. Right. Because white is not going to be the most sensible. And I'm not necessarily known for making sensible things, but I like to make fun things. That's great. Okay, let's see the next one because the next one is wool. Ooh. And this is one I probably did about 15 years ago, and it is, again, a classic. So I was sort of inspired by the West Coast sort of designs, and I sort of said, okay, let's take a white base. And again, no side seam. This is all one piece. So that goes along with your free-flowing form. You can felt this piece if you want, or you can buy a piece of wool fabric like this, applique the wool melton onto it, and stitch it. So dramatic. So it is very dramatic. So then let me show you the one that the rug inspired. So here we go with... So does oh, this look like the rug? It does. So there, the same motifs. There it is, yes. So we just took all of those. In fact, let me... Can I take this off you and take Certainly. this back to the table and then we'll sort of show you what we did. Okay. So we'll put it next to... Because you can then, of course, choose your own colors and your own... But it is sort of my... You know, nothing is ever the same, and you get inspirations from all kinds of things. So I said, okay, let's take a piece of white wool. Of course, this is woven. And then let's make some shapes. I particularly like working on duffel, and I don't know if you're familiar with duffel, because duffel is a woven fabric, and then it's washed and felted. Well, that feels so strong, but it's yes, still really nice. But it looks kind of felty, doesn't it? it, well, looks it kind of, well, it is. And yeah. It is, because it's been all washed. and So you get kind of a little bit of both, and it comes like this. I mean, you, you can just... Get it like 60 inches wide and it's done. So then what we decided to do was cut out some shapes because I said, where are we going to, how are we going to do this? The person that actually got to sew this wasn't so tickled with my idea because there is a lot of sewing on that. But I thought, well, let's just take those shapes and make a few more. So we made a few more different kind of shapes and kind of played around. And I tended to make it symmetrical. So if you look at this, oh, back, no, there's the pattern. I thought that was kind of a simpler way of doing it. Then, then there's some sort of system to it. So well, this almost has kind of a, a kaleidoscope sort of symmetry to yes. it. Yes, and I, I thought, really well, like that's it. simple because then I only have to sort of figure it out half, and then you can just you know <laughs> do the other half the same. But yet it's like a quilt; it's not going to be exactly the same. If you actually measured and fussed, it's not going to be exactly. And the if same. you're using that material, it's not raveling. No, this is the wool melt, and it doesn't ravel, so it does make for quite a fine, clean fine thing. Yeah. yeah. What I did was I just used a wide zigzag, so you just take a wide zigzag, and it's tough to see because it is invisible thread. And I did start this, but then I gave it to one oh, of my good idea. wonderful helpers. Invisible thread, so you can do the whole thing. And I kind of make it into a game when I do this. I sort of say, well, how far can I go with one bobbin and one spool? And we just kept going. If you notice, the pocket works right into oh, the design. That's brilliant. So it's all into there. So there's actually a pocket. So you think we could do some garments and we could be we could be great friends. Oh, gosh. <laughs> there's no, there's no limit. This has been so much fun. Thank you so much for coming. we got to go. We're out of time. So join us again next time, and we'll just do fun things all over again. What a pleasure.
To receive the companion book for this series, send 1998 to the address on your screen or call 1-888-McPhee.